Okay, now I'm going to go over <clears throat> the absolute mess that documentation is in dealing with this problem, the absolute confusion that, that, that's out there. And right now I'm talking about Ubuntu 10.04, okay? Okay, here's one. Uh, this, this search came up, it's buglaniablogspot.com, software audio mixing in Ubuntu. And <clears throat> it gets into a lot of different details so much that it's almost <clears throat> not really um, very useful for anybody. But the idea I got, somehow this came up, I, I searched for Ubuntu, no sound, and, and the word Java. And I don't know if this guy is actually doing anything to try to deal with Java in here. But nonetheless, I, it gave me a very blurry idea that somehow I should edit a, um, a file called etc. asound.com and put all these, well, non-self-explanatory entries in there. I'll tell you that was not part of the solution that I needed. So that, 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 that's a no. That's one that, that came up. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay, so now let's deal with people that are actually directly trying to actually trying to deal with the same problem that I'm having. You know, no sound in Java and Ubuntu. And here's one. It says, instead of using a fixed directory for Java, run etc. alternatives Java. I didn't try it. I don't see how that is going to do a damn thing to make the, the uh, live J sound uh, Elza not run in, in the Firefox browser. Next one is doing some kind of <laughs> uh, update the alternatives. No, it, I didn't do that. Didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know if I um, installed this Flash plugin non-free extra sound. I might have. It certainly has nothing to do with the video card. This guy starts discussing that. This one uh, saying you have to install Pulse Audio Volume Control, PAVU Control. I, I did that, but I don't think that that solved the problem. The, the, the problem in my case on this desk clearly is the the, the library. Yes, do install the Ubuntu restricted extras. Okay. These are all all those are solutions from the same thread. But one part of that thread had a solution where you're supposed to rename your Java binary and create your own script that'll launch the binary and inject pulse audio. That no. That 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 just that'll just trash your Java and won't even run. So you, so you gotta undo that. Deleting the I didn't delete the dot pulse directory. Okay, this is karmic, Ubuntu 910, but somehow I don't think that's that's gonna be a solution. Then there's a uh, adding a uh, start pulse audio x11 to the x init rc. That's a very odd idea for me. That's that's the x386 configuration. I don't even know if also has anything to do with it. It is a way to get apps to run, but it just, it just seems goofy to me. This one where you have to remove, you know, all these different things and, you know, and then install the Flash plugin non-free. That's not the only solution for the specific problem I was dealing with, which was put sound in Ubuntu 10.04 at the Pogo site, which utilizes Java and Flash. Uh, this one where they say install G Streamer, Alza Mixer, and OSS, and remove Pulse Audio G Streamer and VLC plugin. I think I tried that at home. That may now be the reason why changing uh, the Alza plugin won't work for me at home. So don't do that. <laughs> and you see, the, all these solutions seem to keep going in circles where a solution for one person. But it's only a partial, partial and incomplete solution, because the person proposing the solution doesn't know everything that plays into the whole mix as to why the sound isn't working. 
could actually cause problems for somebody else if they just if they're destroying this that and the other thing as they come up and so I need pulse because I'm not using uh, Alza directly to plug into Firefox but I do know that um, pulse works with Alza and it needs a working Alza and so if I'm not going to be injecting Elza into Firefox to produce sound in Java, I'm going to need Pulse to do that because I'm not using the open source sound system. So uh, that's another thing I'm going to have to do when I get home. That may be the, the solution. Uh, doing this this stuff for you, this is all crap. Uh, move, you know, renaming the Java to Java bin and putting this stuff in there. That, that doesn't do that. All it causes my Java to do is freeze. It doesn't do anything. I don't know if anybody's actually even tried that. They're just copying it from somebody else. Same deal. This is uh, part of that overall solution. No, this is, again, is it all from the same. No, it's from a different thread. There's like, there's like, you can get like 10 or 20 different web hits by, by Googling. You know, so if anybody lectures you about how Google's your friend, well, there's, there's, it's, as the underlying system changes over time, Google's not your friend because you're going to come up with solutions that are invalid or may even snooker you out of a solution you would have had otherwise had you not taken the step. And then there's the update alternatives. I don't know what that is. I didn't do it. I don't think it has anything to do with it or much. This is right, okay? you should use Sun Java 6 instead of OpenJDK and what's so so confusing about the way the Ubuntu Software Center is set up if you have jo uh, Sun Java 6 they're trying to make it user friendly but they're not if you have the Sun Java 6 installed it'll say the OpenJDK is installed but you didn't install the OpenJDK you installed the OpenJava 6 they're trying to not have you install two sets of Java by, by cutting you off at the pass, but the, but the problem is is that say someone has the right Java installed and they did they just didn't rename that library file there. And when they did it was incorporated with that other um, renaming the Java binary. And then so they think that that whole set of solutions is completely invalid. So they try the open JDK uh, uninstall the open JDK and then and then they reinstall the open, you know, the, all they've done is uninstalled and reinstall the a program they already had. This thing's going around everywhere. I don't see. I, I, it may have worked in uh, a version of Ubuntu that's quite early, but now it's just nothing. Okay. This I did install. I don't know if it's part of the solution. Uh, Live ESD Alza Zero. Um, Ice Weasel has nothing the fuck to do with it. I, Ice Weasel is a as far as I know, is a Firefox plugin that allows you to uh, use your um, GNU Privacy Guard keys, and they discontinued the project. And my guess is it has something to do with security. So whoever wrote this up is probably you know, no desktop browser. You know, I don't know what the fuck any of this stuff has anything to do with the, the the. I think they're just trying to get you to install a program that has a security vulnerability. Yeah, honestly, um, I'll I'll say that. And this, you want to uninstall the Ice T and the Open GDK. You want both those uninstalled. Instead, you want to get the brand name. And again, we have another open source solution that doesn't work as well as, as the corporate solution. Yet, yeah, we got guys like Eric Raymond, they're going to go around and tell everybody that bugs live forever in closed source software. Well, I'm here to tell you once again <laughs> that ain't the case, my friend. And. Let's just accept the fact, not confuse people, and get a big debate over you know, falsehood. I mean, you know, these vendors give a damn about their customers enough to compile the software. They're probably going to do it right. So I am not in favor of putting, uh, trying out the open source solution first and then seeing if the proprietary solution works after that. I am absolutely for trying the proprietary solution first. And then seeing if the open source solution works after that. And you, you're going to save a lot of people a lot of hell, a lot of searching. I, I worked on this for, this probably sucked up two hours of my time. For what? All because someone convinced Ubuntu to supply the ice chi and the open JDK first before the, the Sun Java. And because of the underlying chaos 
when Pulse got in the mix. And it wasn't incorporated directly and neatly and cleanly into Alza as if it were Alza. So Alza would work the same way, and all the apps that depend on Alza would work the same way. If you didn't do that, it caused, it caused a ton of problems. That choice, that choice to make the audio device HW 1,0, and that choice to um, not have Pulse go through Alza and have Alza be the last thing that all the programs are looking for caused a ton of problems. So no, don't do that. But people are going to keep doing that. They don't think. They just think they're just going to make their neat thing and they're going to move on. I do like the work that people do, but the bottom line, at the end of the day, you got to have things work. And I'm going to show one more time where this thing is. you got to change the name of after you do all those steps. And that is this file here, live jsound alza.so rename that li that lives in the user live JVN Java 6 Sun JRE Live I386 directory is what you want to rename. That way, Java won't pull up the Alza plugin and it'll let Pulse do its thing. That's all you need to know. So I am done. I'm going to load these up, and I hope this helps. But I hope, hope it also exemplifies the way things can go really bad if, if programs that rely on a certain infrastructure are disrupted because the infrastructure that it relies on is changed. And I think if we're going to incorporate any kind of new dev uh, features, we got to make that work within the infrastructure that we already have, so it won't behave, won't change the behavior of the programs that depend on the infrastructure that existed when it was made. There's no reason to change that. I'm done.